Bonjour ladies and gents, welcome back. In this video, I'm gonna give my thoughts about the upcoming quarterfinals. Before the Grand Slam started, I made a preview of the video about the top eight uh, tennis player that I was that I thought was gonna reach the second week that's gonna play in the quarterfinals. And of my top eight list, six had advanced to quarterfinals, and uh, the only ones that didn't make it was the very unpredictable. Matteo Berrettini, I, I had him as a quarterfinal um, candidate because I thought he had an easy draw. He should win a couple of matches, but he lost and um, he lost to Altmaier and lucky uh, and qualifier. And then I had Alexander Shasha Zverev. He crashed out yesterday against um, Yannick Sinner. No, it was uh, the day before against Yannick Sinner. In a four set battle uh, some say he was sick he, or he got a uh, fever or something but anyway he lost that match and uh, now i have only six names i have of course djokovic i have uh, tsitsipas rublev and uh, on the in the bottom section of the draw i have nadal i have swatchman i have dominic team those are my names remaining and after today and tomorrow i will probably have all of four in the in the semifinals but we will see it's very difficult to predict like you know it's but it's not like the women's tennis you barely know who's gonna win the match but uh, anyway let's go into these quarterfinals we have eight men left that has played and deserved their spot all of them have played rock solid in this tournament uh, some of them have convinced me more than the other, of course. And uh, a guy like Schwarzman has impressed me. Uh, Nadal and Djokovic, they are on the cruise control until the quarterfinals, like always when, when it comes to Grand Slams. And then we have Dominic Thiem, who, who barely ex escaped, escaped the fourth round against Gaston. And then we have uh, um, Alexander Rublev and uh, Stefano Tsitsipas, two guys that have didn't didn't have a su super easy draw. At least not uh, Rublev. He played a five set battle against Sam Querrey in the first round, and then he dropped a set against Davidovic Fokina, and uh, and then he dropped a set against Fuskovic also. So, and uh, in the third round he won against Kevin Anderson in three straight sets. So. His path to the quarterfinals hasn't been easy, but he managed to show some great fighting spirit and and uh, turn the tables around in many of those matches when he was uh, uh, when his opponents were ahead of him. And then we have Stefano Tsitsipas, his opponent. He fa he dropped two sets against Monar in the opening round, and then he won against Cuevas, uh, Beden, and yesterday against Dimitrov. He is looking very sharp the last two three matches the young greek and then we have pcb of course it's gonna meet novak again we will see they didn't play the match in the last round at yusuf and you know what happened there the, 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 the novak djokovic default and he had uh, milman in the first round paya in the second round and arbe uh, a great uh, strong player that he beat in the third round and yesterday he beat the Journeyman, the, the qualifier from Germany, Altmaier, I think it's from Germany, or maybe it's Austria, I forgot. But uh, that journeyman's journey ended yesterday. Well done, four rounds. He played four rounds here, so that's a hell of an achievement. He beat Berrettini in the third round, so he shouldn't be ashamed of himself. And um, uh, that, that, he beat Feliciano Lopez, Straff, and Berrettini. They were, solid uh, top 50 players so he should he has done a great result this young um, german that i hope to see more in the future of all right so who is gonna have the stamina the will to win the extra fuel the extra gear in their in their engine who's gonna advance to the semifinals that that's a big question if we start with the first match, it's uh, Novak. Uh, one of the first matches, uh, one of the quarterfinals is between uh, Novak Djokovic and Pablo Carreno Busta. These guys has met four times before, and Novak is up three-one, 
and uh, his only loss was at US Open the default where he lo lost of course maybe everybody knows that by now so I don't have to go into that and in yesterday's match against Kachanov Novak played rock solid baseline game that we all used to see he did a uh, a great amount of uh, drop shots to make Kachanov take him by surprise and make him uncomfortable. He managed to do that many times and he was very successful. You know Novak, when he plays tennis, he's the most complete player on tour. It's no doubt about it. He has a depth in his backhand, in his forehand, de deadly underrated. He has a great first and second serve. He has a great movement. He has great shot selection. The list goes on and on and on and on. You know, he's the most complete player in, in, in the circuit now. And in yesterday's match, he won 70% of his first serves in, 59% of his second serves in, and returned uh, decent. He won 45% of Kachanov's huge serve and 41% of his second serves and managed to hit 44 winners and uh, made 28 uh, unforceros. And he converted... Six out of fifteen uh, break points opportunities, and it's a regular day on work. He didn't really get got threatened by Kachanov, who has a huge, uh, powerful strokes. But it's not the Novak he met when he won the ATP uh, Indoors Masters at uh, Paris uh, 2018. Novak has looked deadly supreme this year. He hasn't lost a match that they. Uh, if you don't, if you count out the Adria Tour matches, if you count out the default at US Open, Novak really hasn't lost a game, and he will ad advance through these um, quarterfinals. I think maybe maybe PCB was played rock solid can take a set from him because PCB yesterday when he played against uh, mm, uh, this German dude. He served decent. He won 66% of his first serves in, but only 47% of his second serves in. So Novak will punish his second serve. And uh, But Karin Obusa, like he did when he met Novak Djokovic, he did a lot of winners, especially from his forehand. He did 44 winners yesterday and only 27 unforceros. But Novak will put pressure on him. He will squeeze those unforceros from PCB because... He's gonna. This battle is gonna go into long rallies, and maybe Novak will have the same scenario as he, when he played against Kachanov with many selection of drop shots and mix up the game to put PCB out of balance or surprise him mainly because Novak will dictate the point from this match. But Kareno is not gonna get schooled in this match. I think he will at least maybe if he's lucky can take one set or push him hard because this is Novak's biggest test so far we all know that and we will see what's happening but I give my edge to Novak in three straight sets but I would not be surprised if PCB takes one or maybe takes it to, this to a five set match but I'm, I'm, I'm more convinced that Novak will take this into a, a three set all right and then we had the other quarterfinals in that in the top half of the draw and that's between uh, Rublev and Tsitsipas, the golden boy of tennis, in my opinion, the guy that I really, really has hyped, that I really wish that he will have a successful career because his plays so beautiful, his ground stroke will be beautiful, but Tsitsipas lacks of a, a rock solid backhand and should have, he should have re started to re return better because otherwise he will be like Federer uh, on that department. The worst returners on tour, in my opinion, are Shapovalov, Wawrinka, and um, Federer. Federer is not a terrible returner, but he should be better. And, of course, Dimitrov. Those four guys with one on the backhand doesn't have a huge return. Either they slice or they, they get... Uh, when they put the ball in, it's too risky. So that's why you see Federer slice so often to cut the ball down. But either way, this matchup is very interesting. Rublev has had three victories against two for Stefano Tsitsipas. They met recently before French Open at Hamburg, where Tsitsipas served for the match, but he somehow couldn't serve up the match, and Rublev fought back in that match and won. And then uh, Rublev won against him last year at uh, US Open. So two, the two biggest victories in this head-to-head 
uh, comparison is in advantage for Rublev. I have picked Rublev as a semi-final candidate in this match, but Rublev had a very difficult run uh, if you count out the you know, uh, Kevin Anderson match. He was, yesterday when he played against this hard-hitting Hungarian Fuskovic, who is a rock-solid player that are very underrated in my opinion. He can um, go into battles, he can he can deliver from the baseline and he's hard to hit through. And we saw yesterday that Rublev had uh, problems in the, uh, he dropped the first set. In the second set, uh, Fuskovic was up 5-2, but somehow Rublev managed to come back in the third set. He was down 1-3, and in the fourth set, uh, Rublev sa saved four set points. So he's a little bit of a comeback king, this uh, Rublev. He doesn't give up that easy, and that's a great uh, asset. That's a, a great thing to know that. And Cis Cispas will know that, because even he have a great uh, big lead like he had in Hamburg, he know that Rublev can bounce back, because Rublev is solid. He has hard, he's a hard hitter. He has a great serve. And uh, he's shot tolerant and he can really challenge Tsitsipas and maybe take advantage of his backhand side. But if Stefanos' backhand works like he did in the ATP finals, he will win this match. So the key for Stefanos is to be a little bit more patient, approach the net more if he can, if he finds the um, right, right moments and uh, serve great in this match like he has done. Because against uh, Dimitrov, he... Won both 71% in his first serve scene and in, in his second serve scene. And um, he returned okay in that match. He won 38% of Dimitrov's first serve and second, and 39% of his second serve. So because we, we all know Dimitrov hasn't a huge serve. He has an okay serve. He's not a fe he doesn't have the Federer serve with precision and angles and uh, speed and coordination like Federer have. So... And he only made 24 winners in that match and uh, 30 unforcers, but Dimitrov made a lot of unforcers in that match and he was very clutch in that tie break. He, he fought back and won that 11-9 against Dimitrov. So Chisipas has the confidence now. He has had some pretty easy matches before this quarterfinal. So I know that he thinks that he's the main favorite in this match. Maybe he is it's 55, 45 to advantage to Tsitsipas, but somehow I think that Rublev advanced through because I have him in my se as a semi-final candidate and I will stick to my uh, prediction. And another thing that uh, about uh, Rublev against Fus Fuskovic, he, 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 when he approached net, he won 69% of those net approaches. So he, he can mix up the game, Rublev. He, everybody knows that you can't just do it from the baseline on this clay court uh, because... Because of the high uh, ball mass, you have to be more creative. We have seen Novak do plenty of uh, drop shots. We saw Gast Gaston, who made like almost on drop shot on every point he played. And uh, we, we have seen the players, because they will take advantage of this low bouncing ball. Uh, and um, it will benefit those who have the guts and are brave enough to execute those drop shots. And then we have another uh, quarterfinal, of course. We have two left, and that's between Dominic Thiem and uh, Diego Swatchman. Swatchman had convinced me in this tournament. He has played every match rock solid without being pushed really much. He hasn't had the greatest competition, but still he's in the quarterfinal like I predicted. He has met Dominic Thiem six. Uh, he has met him nine times and won uh, three of them, Dominic have won. Six of them, I think. Uh, Swatchman won the uh, one at Buenos Aires, and their last and previous meeting was at um, final in Vienna last year on carpet, indoor carpet. I, no, it's not. It was not carpet. It was indoor hard court, of course. They don't play on carpet anymore, like they did in the in, in 90s and 80s. But and that final uh, uh, victory uh, went to Dominic team. He won that match. He's up six three. He has a huge advantage against um, the hard-hitting, uh, rock-solid Argentinian, but team will take him out with his physique and powerful ground strokes and maybe serve his uh, way out of this match. Not that we're going to do like 20, 40, uh, 30 aces, but he will find those angles and pre precision like he has in his second serve 
if uh, he managed to he will return great in this match or in this match also I think because Diego hasn't the greatest serve but uh, what talks in the favor of um, uh, Diego he is solid he, he doesn't do so many unforced errors and in this tournament has done the, uh, the, his numbers are very low but that's because Robert has pushed him team will for sure push Diego but will will that be enough? Some say that uh, Swashing can pull an upset here. Why not? It's a little minor upset alert here. He can, of course, take him out. But it's not like he's facing Gaston, a tricky player that was very unpredictable. He really didn't know what he was going to do. And then this disturbed the Dominic team's game. He didn't fi uh, find time to swing. But against Diego, he knows that he will not come up with the same game plan. Even he does his um, drop shots, team is ready now. He has done his lesson. He knows that uh, Diego is not a creative player like Gaston is. And, uh, but that was his only chance, uh, Gaston, because he can't outpower uh, Dominic team from the baseline. It's a mission impossible. We saw that when team wanted the battle, he, he, he won those biggest rallies at the biggest moments. The, he was more clutch in that match. And of course, Gaston did a lot of unnecessary drop shots in the end that didn't uh, went through. But uh, Diego Swatchman, he has to duel and take him out from the baseline, maybe approach the net, mix up the game. But I think that Dominic team will win this match in four sets and advance to the, a semi-final. And who will he meet there? Of course, it will be Rafael Nadal because uh, he will take on Yannick Sinner, this next-gen superstar, talented, uh, hyped guy that many people want and has counted as a future number one. We will see about that here. He beat Gofan in the first round, Bones in the second, Corey in the third round, and he took out a Zverev that wasn't in 100% shape. This uh, tall Italian guy with huge ground strokes, huge forehand, huge backhand, a hard hitter. He has short tolerance. He can really challenge Ch uh, Rafa from the uh, baseline in the beginning but sooner or later you know what Rafa does we keep up with him for a half an hour from maybe one hour maybe one and a half hour two or three sets but then he will eat you alive at least these low ranked players if they are not named Djokovic or Team or maybe Medvedev so Nadal has a tough task against this young dude because he doesn't really have much to lose he will go all in. He will mix up shots. He will try to execute his plan. He will go for the trigger. He knows that he can't. Nadal is not as resistant as he has been before. So Nadal will also try to. If not, Nadal is a smart tactical player. If he knows that in the beginning that these exchanges from the baseline doesn't benefit him, he will mix up the game also. He has different plans. Uh, this 12 time Spaniard, 12 time champion at Roland Garros. For sure, Nadal would advance. I'm not uh, worried about this match. If an upset comes, it would be a huge, huge, huge surprise. With the magnitude like an earthquake, in my opinion. But Sinner, he's young. He's, he has nothing to lose. Like I said, he has great weapons. He can use those weapons if he can use it at the right time and doesn't do too many unforced errors because Nadal will make him do unforced errors. Believe me, he will try to do what he has done to his uh, to those other guys that he has beaten in this tournament, Gary Samov, uh, uh, McDonald, and then he had uh, uh, Travaglia and Korda, and those are not really names that scares you, and Seniors is a much, much, much better player than those guys, but still it's Rafael Nadal, and when he enters the court, he must have the right, fo he must have the focus and the mindset that he can be beat Rafael Nadal. Because many of those guys that he has beaten, after the first set loss, they hang their head down and the match is pretty over after the first set. He has to compete and take care of the first set. That's the most important set, of course. But the imp most important, of course, the last ball. Who is the last ball? And Nadal is a ma maestro at that department. So all in all, I think that Djokovic advance and will meet Rublev in the, one of the semifinals. And then the Dominic team will take on Nadal in the much expected semi-final that everybody wants to see, that many people have predicted, that many experts 
have uh, talked about. We will see that matchup, I think. And um, I hope both the, all of the eight guys today put up the best, best performance and do a really, really solid performance. And um, that's all for today. Thanks. Goodbye.